I'm Katrina. You're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Eddie Reynoso's whole team is on that shit, says Devin Haney. Let's talk about it. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So after Canelo Alvarez tested positive for a PED clenbuterol, Oscar Valdez, he follows in his footsteps, and he tests positive for a very similar PED, which is called Fentermine. It's a central nervous stimulant prohibited by the Volunteer Anti-Doping Agency. The main benefit you get out of both of these drugs that Canelo and Oscar Valdez tested positive for is to rapidly burn fat in a short period of time. In other words, giving you the ability to lose weight quicker than you would have been able to do on your own while retaining muscle at the same time, which is what makes it a PED. And it's very important to note that. Because of course you're going to have some Canelo fans or Mexican fans because we're not talking just about Canelo. We're talking about everyone in this camp. So you'll have some Mexican fans that'll say, oh, well, you know, that was just a diuretic. You know, he's just trying to lose weight. That is a PED. Anything you couldn't do on your own and you needed some type of enhancer to do it for you. That's the exact definition of a performance enhancing drug. Canelo blamed it on meat in Mexico and Oscar Valdez, he's blaming it on herbal tea in the States. You know, when I reported this story, the Oscar Valdez story, I quoted or I mentioned exactly what Jamel Herring said when he actually heard about it. I was surprised that Jamel, he showed no fear and he called it what it is. He basically said that Oscar Valdez got caught cheating and it's not a good look for Oscar. I told you guys in that video, you know things are really bad when other professional boxers are calling you out, exposing you. Because boxers are often afraid to speak on issues like this about another fighter, especially black fighters, because of the backlash they will get from racist fans on the internet, on Instagram, on Twitter, etc., etc. Just like the backlash any black fighter gets for even calling out Canelo Alvarez. When it comes to Demetrius Andrade and Jamal Charlo, nobody had anything bad to say about them until they wanted to fight Canelo. That's when all of a sudden overnight, they became the worst fighters in boxing, the biggest bums, bigger bums than anyone that Canelo has ever faced, right? All it took was for them to mention Canelo's name. Even David Benavidez said, he was going to stop calling Canelo Alvarez out, he said, because his fans are crazy. This is what David Benavidez said. So I give Jamel Herring, Devin Haney, and Javante Tang Davis a lot of credit for not being afraid to address something that needed to be addressed and not swept under the rug, which is what old media is going to try to do, just like they pretty much tried to do when Canelo tested positive for PEDs. You have the WBC who increased the levels of clenbuterol. So now Canelo, he can continue to take his PEDs without testing positive. Something else the WBC did, and this was really, really slick. They only suspended Canelo for six months which means it really wasn't a suspension because Canelo already fights every six months, or at least back then he did. He would fight twice a year. And this was the reason why I've also seen articles or forums where people were asking, when was Canelo Alvarez suspended for testing positive for PEDs? The reason why people are still scratching their head asking the question is because once again, realistically, he wasn't suspended. With that being said, I want to go back to what Devin Haney said. I, at least I want to elaborate on everything that he actually said about Eddie Reynoso and Canelo Alvarez, the whole team, basically. So he starts off and he tweets, both tested positive for some shit. What that tell you? And as you guys can see in this image, just like I told you, people are going to try to defend Canelo and Oscar Valdez. So this guy is saying that they're not even on the same shit. I've already explained to you. 
both drugs gives you pretty much the exact same benefits. The main focus is on burning body fat, losing weight in a very short time frame. So moving on, Devin Haney, he follows up and he says, Eddie Reynoso's whole team is on some shit. And then Eddie Reynoso himself makes the terrible mistake of responding to Devin Haney. He says, no haters, no life. Then he says in Spanish, pinche culon, which is a couple of curse words. So anyway, after Reynoso said, no haters, no life, he left himself wide open for a perfect counter because this is when Devin Haney, he said, no juice, no trainer of the year. I mean, everybody is going in on Oscar Valdez and the whole Canelo camp. Even Javante jumped in and he posted this, LOL. So we using stimulants to enhance our performance now? Bet. Something else that Devin Haney said, which speaks to the point I was making earlier. He said, they scared to say it, I'm not. Overall, this was a powerful statement from Devin Haney. And I'm telling you right now, because people like Devin Haney, Jamel Herring, and Javante Tank Davis are not afraid to speak on this, more people are going to start becoming comfortable to speak on this. Someone else I forgot about too, even Keith Thurman, before the Oscar Valdez news came out. Keith Thurman, he has said, man, whatever type of meat Canelo was on, it's working. So everyone is starting to talk. I mean, even Robert Garcia, the biggest Canelo supporter, even he was implying that the whole meat excuse, it was extremely suspicious because he made the same point that I made when Canelo first came out with the whole meat excuse. I had said, how is it possible that a millionaire would be out eating dirty meat in Mexico? When you are a millionaire, you're going to get the best grade of steak, period. You're not going to take any chances, especially when you already know that there's all type of contaminated meat in Mexico. And not only that, but if this was truly an accident, Canelo would have most likely fired people that even brought the meat to him. He didn't do any of these things because it was all intentional. Obviously, this is the reason why, of course, the WBC once again increased the levels of clenbuterol. So Canelo Alvarez and other Mexican fighters can have an excuse to cheat. So now that fighters, if you want to edge, you want to go ahead and get some PEDs and prepare for a fight, all you have to do is train in Mexico, right? And you pull the same Canelo excuse. Let's see how far that goes when black Americans start going over to Mexico and loading up on that good meat. Do you guys really think it's a mere coincidence that when Canelo Alvarez tested positive, for PEDs, he surprisingly got a random drug test from VADA while he was in Mexico. He did not expect VADA to come all the way out to Mexico and test him. That's how he ended up testing positive because he never expected that test, which is why they call it random drug testing. You don't know when and you don't know where you're gonna be tested, right? Now, coincidentally, Canelo has done this on numerous occasions where at the very last minute, he's negotiating a fight and at the very last minute, he just pulls out of the fight completely, right? And you gotta understand something. Canelo Alvarez is missing out on fighting on a Mexican holiday. So if he's pulling out at the last minute, you know there has to be some big reason why he would do that. Now, I'm going to say this again. When Canelo was negotiating with Caleb Plant, Caleb agreed to all of Canelo's demands and Canelo still turned down the fight. He still pulled out of the September date. Now, if Canelo didn't already test positive for PEDs before, then it wouldn't look that suspicious. But because of his history, that's what really makes the whole situation suspicious. I'm telling you guys right now, I need to just make the point again. You are going to start seeing a lot of boxers come out and speak on this whole Canelo situation, this whole Eddie Reynoso team situation. 
a lot more professional boxers are gonna start speaking on this matter because other fighters have already stood up and spoke on it. So they pretty much kicked the door down open and a gang of people are about to come through that door. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. Get ready to take your striking game to the next level with the Focus Ball. Dramatically improve footwork, timing, head movement, hand-eye coordination, reflex, and overall fight IQ. It's lightweight and extremely portable, so you can train every time, everywhere. When you don't have a coach to do mitt work, get a Focus Ball. When you don't have a heavy bag to hit, get a Focus Ball. When you don't have a sparring partner, Get yourself a focus ball. And when you just want to have fun punching and kicking, get a focus ball. When you train with the focus ball, you train your eyes and your brain to read punches so that you can hit and not get hit. Making this very simple device a must have for all combat sports athletes and enthusiasts alike. So if you want to take your striking game to the next level, don't wait. Get the focus ball now. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, then this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Dekey Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODekey.com, like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram. Fellas, I've got some great news for you. If you've lost your hair or have a receding hairline, the time has come when you can finally get your hairline back through a process called scalp micropigmentation. So here's how it works. It's a hair tattoo that replicates the look of your hair follicles when you have fully shaved it down. So to get this hookup, make sure you follow and contact my man Scalp Carolinas on Instagram. Contact them at 704-499-3471 and make sure you follow them on Instagram.